on the door. And we don't want to just knock on that door. We want to blow it off the hinges. guys i am here with alec quay of the horizon roundtable alec is the cleveland state writer um for the roundtable and he has been uh, a part of the team all of this season does it go back into last season at all alec it does not no um okay so alec's been covering um cleveland state for the team now for uh for the year uh anyway and uh, which which is great because it, it's this is such a great resource for Norse fans because you know we get so hyper focused on our team. There's obviously a lot of stuff going on, um, specifically today in the world. Even it's been hard to prepare even for this conversation. Um, mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know um, what what I'm talking about, just uh, do me a favor and uh, what, I don't care when you're watching this. If it's 20 years from now, you're digging through the Norse archives. Just go mm-hmm. Google January 6, 2021, and uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's been a been a fun little day, but, um, but yeah, a- Alec has, uh, has, has agreed to join us today to, to kind of discuss, um, our upcoming weekend matchup against Cleveland state. So Alec, thank you so much for joining. Um, why don't we get started real quick with you just kind of telling us a little bit more about yourself. You kind of started there and, uh, not just about yourself, but also, you know, your involvement with Cleveland state, um, basketball and like how far back your fandom goes. Yeah. Um, well, I've been, a um, I've been a sports journalist since going back to my uh, high school days. Um, my advisor uh, in high school was the athletic director of our high school, and he actually got me a, a weekly writing job writing about our high school sports uh, in a local newspaper. So that was a really cool experience. And then going forward, I've written for a few different websites. I've uh, contributed uh, for Sam Amico's website in the past, uh, NBA writer. Um and my Cleveland State fan, I've, I've been an on and off Cleveland State uh, supporter over the years. Um, my, my, more of my attention in the past has gone to uh, local Division three basketball. But oh, wow. um, that's I kind act- of the opposite of what you hear. Yes, I'm so actually like- supporting um, John Carroll uh, right now with the T-shirt. Um, that's my team. Um, but and I actually, I think uh, the Norse fans would find interesting that I used, uh, when I went to Cleveland State um, before, uh, a couple years ago, I um, was actually on the ground floor as a team manager uh, for the Vikings uh, when Gary Waters was the head coach. This was his second to last year. This was when Trey Lewis was a senior. Uh, so I kind of got a really cool uh, opportunity to see how a Division One men's program runs and uh, just be on the ground floor of everything. Um, I got to uh, watch the Indiana Pacers hold a practice um, when they came into the Wolstein Center. Um, the Bucks were there one time when I wasn't around, but um, yeah, it's just a, it, it was just a really cool opportunity. And uh, ever since then, um, I've always just kind of had a soft spot in my heart for Cleveland State and hope that they do uh, do well. So, okay, I guess we'll just get right into it. Uh, Cleveland State um, six and three this year. Uh, they're six and zero oh in the horizon, so that would mean zero oh and three in non-conference. Um, I did see uh, just some highlights for the fans um, before I give it over to you, Alec. I saw uh, a pretty big blowout. I think they had earlier this year where they got crushed by was it Ohio or somebody from the yes. MAC? Yeah. Okay. So with that said, um, six and zero oh in conference. That's a huge ship writing thing for them walk me through the season so far the highs the lows the ups and downs all that kind of stuff and like where we are now okay for sure um well non-conference was shaky to say the least for the vikings um they originally before covid had uh duke and kentucky scheduled as road games this year but obviously those had to be canceled so they replaced them with uh in-state games against two mac teams toledo who 
was the opening night game. Um, they played them tight. Toledo's a veteran team. Cleveland State uh, was missing Al Eichelberger in that one with the foot injury. They look, They got off to a quick start. They looked like they just missed his presence down low, in the sec- especially in the second half against a veteran-led Toledo team. Ohio, that – that's a that's a team that if they can make the NCAA tournament could make some noise in my opinion. They played Illinois, who was the number five ranked team in the country at the time, very close. And then the game after, they were just riding high in confidence and absolutely smacked Cleveland State. But to Gates's credit, he uh, he got them to refocus, and then they went and played Ohio State, who was another nationally ranked team, really tight. Uh, the whole game, it was back and forth. Cleveland State, um, I think, was down by only a couple points there with a few minutes to go, but Ohio State was able to edge them out uh, in that one. But you were able to see in that game Cleveland State start to gain some confidence, uh, both on the offensive and defensive end. Um, Demoy Hodge had his uh, first double-digit scoring game of the year in that game. Um, and then the game after that, uh, he – or I don't know if it was the game after that. The the order of these games kind of confuses me sometimes. Oh, but hey, don't worry about it. Like, it <laughs> a few games it after that, he went he went absolutely insane for that uh, huge school for, when he dropped forty six uh, three points so shy of the uh, school record. Um, yeah, well, that's but, funny you say that because um, I'm looking at the game logs right now, and I can see why that's confusing because all these game logs are. Purdue Fort Wayne, Purdue Fort Wayne, back to back days. Yeah, it's back to back. Yeah. Um, the it, it had to be the second game. They scored eighty nine in the second game. Um, the first yeah. game they scored like sixty something. So it, I feel like yeah. it had to be the second one. For sure, for sure. But you you saw in that Ohio State game, Cleveland State start to figure some things out um, on both ends, and it's really shown as the start of conference play start uh, as began. Um, then the haters will say it's uh, the start is a result of their uh, schedule so far in conference as they have uh, not faced any of the higher up powers that be yet. Uh, but NKU will provide a uh, really good test for the Vikings this weekend as they go for their uh, to tie their best start in conference play um, in school history. That their best start was seven and zero, and they're looking to match that uh, with one more win on Friday. North Report, we're huge fans of Dennis Gates. Um, to, to his credit, he really got them back on track going at going to Ohio State and losing by seven. I mean, look, Ohio State, like I'm not I know they're not where they have been in their historical. They're they're, they're without you know, their best play, they're without their best player, but I mean that's still a team that is very capable of making the NCAA tournament. It doesn't matter to me. Kentucky's yeah. down. One of the is one of the worst seasons Kentucky's ever had this year. If we oh, went Kentucky. at Kentucky, yeah, yeah, exactly. If we went at Kentucky and played them, we are fifteen point dogs be, just because we're in Rupp, and that's Kentucky. Yeah. So oh, it's yeah. the same. It's to me, it's the same thing, and it's uh, it, you know, it's exacerbated. It's an in-state rival that anyone on on your guys's team from Ohio probably at one point wanted to go there. Um, oh, sure. So, but yeah. Um, you, you made a great point or you made another point I kind of wanted to touch on about, you know, the haters will say that uh, that they haven't played anybody, but like, these are the same people, the, the same people that would say they haven't played anybody are all the same people who um, either had Youngstown state second in conference preseason mm-hmm. or were like contrarian and had them first because they didn't want to put right state second. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear the haters will say, I mean, you, I'm not coming down on you, but, like if people are out there saying that Cleveland state's not for real, like obviously you can't really say for sure that anyone's for real after three weeks of conference play. But yeah. like, I mean, they're number one in the conference and they've beaten a team that we all expect to be pushing the top four, top five by the end of the year. And that's only because they got off to a slow start. Like we all expect the Youngstown to be ahead in the conference. So well, they were they were missing Quisenberry for both those games, and um, I think especially in the second game he would have made a bit of a difference. Uh, the first the first one of the set, uh, Cleveland State, uh, really just their 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 full court press. Kind of, we'll get into their more specifics about how they like to do things later on, mm-hmm. but their full court press really wore him down in the in the in the first and uh, early part of the second half of that game, and that wasn't really a contest by the later portion. But in the second game, Youngstown did come out swinging. They were up by double digits in the first half, but CSU was able to chip away um, 
throughout the uh, uh, majority of the second half and get that win. To me, the 18 point victory, like, yeah, if Quisenberry was there, he could have scored those, those points to like make up for it. But that's assuming that everything stays the exact same if Quisenberry is there. And then he just adds on 18 points. Like we all right. know that doesn't work like that. So, yeah. Um, to your point, this will be an awesome litmus test uh, this weekend for both teams. Um, we, we also, we actually split to Youngstown state. So there's a, there's a, um, a, a common opponent, but we also played Purdue Fort Wayne twice as well. And, and we, we beat them uh, by a total margin of victory. That's only two points less than you guys. So I don't know. I haven't watched a lot of Cleveland state this year, but just looking at the numbers um, where you guys rank in uh, defensive production, um, like team defense, basically holding opponents to, I think it was like 65 points a game or something. Mm -hmm. Um, I see that this weekend is definitely going to be a challenge for us. And it's honestly, my guess is, and we'll talk more, I think about this at the end is it's going to come down to sort of who plays better defense and is able to convert their defense into offense. So because it looks like both teams have that as a philosophy, but I want you to confirm that with me. Um, what is Cleveland state's sort of philosophy from a team perspective and then breaking it down? Like, do they just run an open motion offense? Uh, what's their defense look like? Stuff like that to the best that you can explain. Yeah. Well, I'm going to start first defensively because that's where I think, um, coach Gates puts a lot of his emphasis on, um, But first and foremost, Cleveland State wins this year using their depth. Um, They have a tremendous amount of capable players on their team that all can do different things. Um, I believe in most games you only see like one or two players at most play over 30 minutes for the Vikings. So you're going to see a lot of different guys uh, getting getting time. Um, But defensively for the Vikings, they've really – done a very good job of playing both the um, uh, man-to-man and uh, a zone. Um, We've seen in some games, especially in games against teams that like to shoot threes, they will uh, a lot of the times uh, off makes uh, implement a 2-2-1 full court zone press and then sag that that off into a 2-3 zone. Um, And that was very effective, especially against Purdue Fort Wayne, a team that likes to just hoist them up from beyond the arc a lot of the time. Um, another major key for the Vikings. Also, also like NKU, by the way, fans. Okay, so be, okay. Be ready for that. Yeah, we shoot. We shot like the tenth most threes in the country last year. Okay, so <laughs> get get ready to see some uh, some more zone from Cleveland State, most likely, right? and some more press from Cleveland State mm-hmm. off makes to try to combat that. Um, Cleveland State also um, the last couple games has been working Al Eichelberger back in the rotation. Um, and that has really been a steadying force for them in their half court sets. Um, whenever there's a panic situation, you, they can always throw the ball down to Michael Berger on the block and let him, he's a very good passer. Um, so, um, they run a lot of sets through Michael Berger, uh, because of his passing ability. And, um, that is something to look for, uh, this weekend for sure. Uh, he played a season high 20 minutes coming back from that foot injury in the last game for Cleveland state. Uh, unclear on whether he's going to start or not. Uh, my gut would tell me no, considering the way things are going right now with Deontay Johnson as a starter. He's been absolutely phenomenal for Cleveland State, especially defensively. So I expect to see Eichelberger more off the bench as things go forward, but um, we'll see what Coach Gates has to say about that. Well, that, uh, that speaks to the Cleveland State. I'm just going to interrupt you real quick. Sorry. Yeah, that, sure. that speaks to the Cleveland State depth right there. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the the game logs right now. You guys got 10 guys that have registered minutes in eight or more games of your nine games this year. Mm -hmm. That's not even including Eichelberger, who's only been a part of three of them. So, I mean, you guys are deep, deep, deep. And if you can have a a third team all conference player coming off your bench and like not really lose much because you got a guy who's currently, I think, number one in blocks right now. Yeah. uh, and uh um spider johnson uh, Deontay johnson. johnson thank you Deontay johnson thank you yeah uh i wonder i'm sure that's why they call him spider probably right yes <laughs> uh, nice nice so um yeah it it's uh people need to understand that like this isn't your you know this isn't your 2016 17 cleveland state team <laughs> oh absolutely not and one one other thing i wanted to point out um mm-hmm. Des Moines hodge um a lot of 
people just think of him as a scorer. And rightfully, I mean, his scoring prowess is, I mean, he, Coach Gates has said multiple times why it shows why he was recruiting him back when he was at Florida State because this guy can go out and drop 40 any night. But he's also top 20 in the nation in steals. Yeah, that's what I and, was going to ask and, you about. <laughs> and he's also I has registered multiple games with multiple block shots. And for a guard of his size to be able to do that, he I'm it's it's just absolutely phenomenal for Cleveland State and it really sets the tone um for that full court press that they like to run um when you have guys like uh Hodge and Craig Bodwan who's the starting point guard at the the head of that press it it really forces uh opposing teams to get into their offensive sets a lot slower than they would like if they avoid if they avoid a turnover so yeah. um I, I I can't I'll say it till I'm blue in the face but it's Cleveland State wins with their defensive pressure and and it's it's been a blessing to watch so far this year which sounds problematic considering um you guys are taking on a Norse team that is sur- just full of freshmen I mean we have uh we have a guard I will say our saving grace against you guys is going to be Bryson Langdon um mm-hmm. he's our starting point guard uh he led the Horizon League last year in assist to turnover ratio um so he's by by that measure anyway you could say he was the best point guard in the league I mean I know there's other analytics and other things to look at but generally speaking assist to turnover ratio is a pretty oh, good I'm a, I'm a heavy believer in that stat yeah absolutely yeah yeah I mean it's just it's I, I know like stats are stats but that one just says this guy does not turn the ball over and he gets his teammates involved boom yeah and so so you love to see that um and we're going to need him. I mean, uh, because behind him, uh, we have a kind of like a revolving door. Um, Carlos mm-hmm. Hines is a is a is a transfer um, who came in and has been in and out of the lineup. Missed this past weekend. It was reported by the actual broadcast team um, on the live event or you know on the live game. So I'm assuming it's true that uh, COVID uh, protocols. I don't know if that means failed test or social distancing guidelines were broken or what, but he, he was unavailable and he's a junior yeah. Juco guy. So we had to, in his absence, um, resort to, in our second game against Purdue, we had to resort to walk on freshman uh, Jacob Evans for defensive purposes because Bryson Langdon got four fouls. Now yeah. that I'm certain is not the long-term solution to a full court pressing Cleveland state team. Um, that is six and zero, and coached by one of the best young head coaches in the country. Yes. Um, with a bunch of guards, especially one that's aver- that has twenty one steals in nine games. Um, I can't imagine we're going to put Jacob Evans in that situation in the event Bryson Langdon gets in foul trouble. So, Norse fans, be ready because it's if Bryson doesn't really be Bryson Langdon this weekend, and he gets in foul trouble, you know, God forbid, tweaks tweaks an ankle, something going to get really interesting really fast i think um so yeah that's uh that's that's a really good breakdown man um I, i'm looking at uh some of and the there was there was one more thing i wanted to point out if that's okay um go for it I, I just wanted to give a special shout out to coach gates um because he has these guys buying in not only on the floor but in the classroom um th- it was reported by uh billy hartman the um uh, the uh guy who does who deals with the, the press that um, Cleveland state finished uh, their, their fall semester with the second highest team GPA in uh, program history with wow. over three to five. Um, so these guys are not only buying into what coach Gates is saying um, on the floor, but uh, they're buying into what he's saying in the classroom. And I know from my experience working as a team manager for that program back in the day, that was not absolutely not the case. So I, I just want to give him a special shout out uh, for getting these guys to buy in. And as someone who has um, not really followed the team so closely in the past couple of years to jump right in and uh, uh, follow them this year has just been an absolute blast. And I, I can't wait for the rest yeah. of the season. Yeah. That, I mean, that tells me that Dennis Gates gets it right. Like yeah. you, uh, I, that's a big criticism I've had in the past of not so much, uh, you know, publicly, but it's more conversational, but I'm glad you brought it up. I've criticized in the past, some of these re, uh, retread, you know, 
big time D one head coaches that end up at horizon league schools. Mm -hmm. Darren Horn could fall in that category technically because he was at South Carolina and came to North Carolina to Northern Kentucky after many years out of, uh, head coaching. But, um, you know, a lot of these Dennis Felton, Mike Davis, guys like that, uh, may not emphasize the student part of student athlete as much. Um, but man, when you get these young coaches like Gates, like they do everything right. And I, it's probably because it's, you know, their first shot, like, you know, um, it's like Eminem and lose yourself, right? Like mm -hmm. your one shot, yeah. your one opportunity, like whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't want to mess anything up and that includes grades. And they know that that's stuff that people are going to look at for future jobs. And, and it's great for you guys, you fans to know that too, that that's a thing, because I mean, that shows commitment for Dennis in the future as well. Like he's going to, you know, he's not at risk of losing scholarships or, uh, you know, mm -hmm. any kind of funding or anything like that. So that's awesome. And good on your, uh, good on your media athletic director for, for putting that out there. Um, oh, absolutely. I was very pleased to get that note. Yeah, for sure. Did, did, did he send that to you or was that? Uh, um, I think um, I'm on just an email list. Um, who, whoever he invites to the zoom press conferences, I guess just gets that, gets some uh, messages from him sometimes over email. That's awesome. And let me ask you this while we're, while we're talking about it, do you have um, you, you, I'm assuming um, are able to zoom in on those like press conferences and stuff like that. Are you oh, able yeah. to like, ask questions and all that kind yeah. of stuff too? Yeah. Yeah. I've uh, been on all of them besides for, for one so far this year. So. And so what can you tell me then about your experience um, kind of getting to know in a professional sense, obviously, or maybe more if you do have some of that, um, Dennis Gates and not just him, but the coaching staff as well. Uh, well, coach Gates is the only one we have access to. Um, uh, there hasn't been any assistants that have jumped in, um, yet so far, okay. but he's just, he's very welcoming, very appreciative of the, of the coverage and, um, yeah, um, nothing bad to say about him. That's awesome. That's great, man. I think that's a huge, that's a huge thing for, for the horizon round table is mm -hmm. getting, getting as much of that access as possible to start getting the story out about these guys. Um, cause I mean, like the horizon league is something that does, it, it, it's an entity that carries some weight, you know, nationally people know about it, but that's not going to last very long. If, if uh, we don't have a huge, a big program emerge to lead it. People but mostly know about it because of Butler. Yeah, right. Butler, maybe because of Valpo as well, but mostly Butler, like you said. And so like, but how many Butlers do we, are we going to have in this conference to take up that mantle? So the answer is none probably. Right. Yeah. And so the, the, the onus, I guess, falls on not just those departments themselves, but also media outlets and stuff like us, like what we do um, to help bring that coverage to them because they, they deserve it. Um so anyway, that was just a small, a small little rant. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I did want to ask you um, a little bit about, you said that you guys, they run a two, three zone. Have you noticed, um, you know, a lot of these. Well, they've they've run of, both so far this year. Um, depends on what, what the opponent the likes to a do. two, three and a what? Man to man. man okay. Man to man. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I would personally expect more, more zone based on, I mean, I know we shoot a lot of threes, but we don't shoot a high percentage. So it might be one of those things where um, I could see I could see it being the where Gates might want to to kind of bait us into what can be a pretty big weakness for us, especially yeah. after speeding us up, right? Speed yeah. us up, speed us up, speed us up, get us out of uncomfortable, fall back into your two three zone with your three, you know, Goliath or your two Goliaths down low, yeah, and dare us to to shoot, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, I, I could totally see that happening. Oh, I was going to ask actually on the, on the two, three specifically, have you noticed, do they trap out of that at all? Or is it just a, a passive two, three, or is it an aggressive where they're playing the passing lanes or does it kind of just vary? Um, well, I think Cleveland state's guards by nature, like to play the passing lanes. Right. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how much of that is, um, taught. <laughs> yeah. I think that's just something that's innate for them. Yeah. Uh, Bodo, uh, Craig Bodoan's had a couple of steals in the last few games. Um, Hodge has been doing it all year. Um, there's a, 
Cleveland, you were talking about Northern Kentucky having to go to a walk-on. Um, Cleveland State actually has uh, um, a walk-on that I like to consider a bit of a secret weapon who's a defensive specialist, um, Michi, uh, Demetrius Michi Terry. Um, he's Instagram famous for having a bald head. And um, No way. That's the um, – oh, who did he guard? Lamelo? Yeah. Who it was? Yeah. The, the overtime and he, Snapchat guy or whatever. Yeah, he's a he's a Lakewood St. Ed's guy. Um, so he played for a really good coach and Coach Flannery there. Um, and he just knows where to be uh, on the floor at the right time. Um, very smart defender, very aggressive defender. Um, so look for if, especially if Cleveland State gets a couple of guys in foul trouble in the backcourt. Coach Gates has no problem putting this guy in the game because of his energy defensively. I am. I'm so glad you told me. I, I that flew right over my head. I completely <laughs> forgot. No, I knew. I knew that y'all signed him. But for those of you guys who don't know, um, I, I'll take this video and uh, I'll make a quick cut um, to it. And I do want to pump out that video that um, Alec is referencing with uh, with uh, Michi Terry. I think. I think at one point I saw something on him, like the bald mamba or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> um, Cause like everyone's the something mamba these days. Right. Yes. Yes. And uh, so th- this is hilarious. I will tell, I will definitely be making sure to tell um, the hall of Vanguard and barstool and KU about that. Uh, <laughs> Cause I know they're going to have some fun with it. Um, is he a freshman or how old is he? He's a freshman. Man, that's awesome. Okay, great. I'm like I said, very glad you told me that. Um, all right. Well, I think uh, that was a great conversation. Um, I'm, I really hope that, you know, our fans watch it and uh, get, you know, from your perspective, uh, some information on this Cleveland state team, because honestly, like nobody's watched nobody that we, that our fans are going to have any kind of like uh, connection to, or any of that has watched this team as much as you have. Right. Like there might be some of our fans who have watched a, a Cleveland state game or two, but like nobody's watched all nine of them. Right. Um, Nobody's paid as close attention to him as you have. Nobody's definitely nobody has had uh, press access and been able to ask questions to the coach. So um, that's why I'd I argue use... I've, I'd, ha- I'd argue I'd have I've had more access to the team than anybody in Cleveland, uh, given the uh, coverage that they get from Cleveland.com, which is an absolute shame. Um, yeah. I know. I mean, I'm as big of a Browns fan as anybody, but this team deserves some press. Um, I'll, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, but um, Dennis Gates deserves a lot of credit and uh, they deserve all the the press in the world right now. Take it from me. I was saying the same thing. I promise. I was saying the same thing as you were um, the year we won the tournament that January. I basically wrote uh, <laughs> it was before I knew anything about horizon round table before I had Norse report or any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I just felt compelled to like get the word out about this freaking team. And so I wrote this blog post about it. I didn't have anywhere to post it. So mm-hmm. I posted it to LinkedIn. Like I posted it to <laughs> my own LinkedIn page as a blog and shared it yeah. out that way. Nice. And uh, that's actually how all this got started. I eventually made a Facebook group and, nice. you know, started making a social media presence and all that kind of stuff. But like, I was with you, man. Like, where the hell is the media? Where's the press? Where's, uh, where are the NKU fan accounts? Like all this kind of stuff. And I hate to say this, but it comes when you make that tournament. Like, yep. it, you know, and it died. There's a reason it died off for you guys, and it's felt and killed it, right? I mean, yeah. But like, Dennis Gates is going to make a tournament. If it's not this year, it'll be next. If it's not next, it'll be the next. But like, within the next three, four years, that te- your guy, you guys are going to the tournament. I would stake my reputation on it, and uh, you'll get you'll get that press then. But I definitely know how frustrating that is, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it is frustrating, but, you know, I, I do what I can to try to give them as much uh, press and support as possible, so. Well, hey, thank you so much for being on. Really appreciate it. Um, and, uh, yeah, we face Cleveland State. Um, uh, NKU, anyway, that is, faces Cleveland State uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, both games at 7. Haven't heard anything to think that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> can I, I really <laughs> I know, I know. I'm I'm gonna be a lot more confident uh, Friday at six forty nine. Um, yes, I'll be confident confined. when I'm in the arena watching them warm up. So, well, thanks so much again, man. Um, we'll be in touch, and uh, fans, um, 
actually, Alec, why don't you tell uh, our fans where they can find you and, and keep in touch uh, with, sure. with the rest of Cleveland State's season? Sure. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Alec, A-L-E-C underscore equates. That's K-W-A-I-T, uh, like the country without the U. Um, so you can find me there. I have all kind of hot takes from uh, freaking out over the Browns during their games to uh, analysis on Cleveland State. So, uh, yeah, you can find me there. And then also uh, give Horizon Roundtable a follow on Twitter as well. That about does it for us. Thanks so much, Alec. Uh, good luck this weekend. Um, I hope that, you know, regardless of the outcome, I hope we can both walk away saying, yeah, that was great, or yeah, that sucked, but you know, <laughs> we're happy with what we saw for these reasons, you know, hoping that we can both take some positives out of this weekend, because I have become sort of like a, you know, a pseudo Cleveland State, I wouldn't say fan, but I definitely am an, a supporter. Um, they're in my top half of teams that I want to see do well in this conference. So um, I'm all about it. For sure, for sure. All right, take it easy, man. Thank you so much for joining. You too, no problem. Thanks for having me. People know who Northern Kentucky is. We're knocking on the door. We don't want to just knock on that door. We want to blow it off the hinges. hinges.